To be a skateboard brand for 25 years means many things. It means first and foremost, people are buying your brand's products. But it also means that you have a lot of diehard fans who believe that what you have done as a brand has actively influenced skateboarding in a positive way. And in my humble opinion, no brand did this better than Zero. Starting in 1996, this brand has made eight full-length videos to date, but I specifically want to talk about their fourth video, 2005's New Blood. Now, I don't really have to give a lot of backstory on Zero. Most people who have been skating for long enough know about the history of Zero. Otherwise, just listen to Jamie Thomas's Nine Club episode since he's the dude who started the brand. He'd have the best story for it. And when it comes to diving into skate video history, since actual release dates aren't really able to be found, and since print magazines are just about the only way to find out what was happening during the filming of a video, it's really hard to find a lot of information. One thing that might actually be helpful with these deep dives, however, is if people in the video have been on the Nine Club podcast with Chris Roberts. But there is a catch to this. Besides the fact that I personally think there's a lot of toxic positivity within this show, I mean, come on. They made Jason Jesse look like a good guy amidst, you know, a wall of proof of him saying the N-word as well as the F-slur and owning and wearing items with Nazi symbols on them. You can listen to like a two or three hour podcast episode where the skater makes zero mention of the video that you're doing research on. Okay, no biggie. They also had a stop and chat. How about listening to another hour and a half where they don't tell any stories about this video either? Tommy Sandoval even has a section in his stop and chat where they talk about clips from his career and absolutely none of them are in new blood. So, needless to say, there are going to be quite a few unanswered questions in a lot of these deep dives, but at least I can say I noticed something and I asked it anyway. But, without further ado, let's dive into the mid-aughts menace that is New Blood. One thing I noticed about the intro is that there's a lot of black at the beginning before the text on screen. They could have either taken their one clip they had and placed it a little later, or had another similar clip right before the text. It was probably done to build a little suspense, but it just looks like lazy editing or an editing mistake. Beyond that, there's not a whole lot to say about this intro. It's got tricks, it's got slams, it's got fun clips here and there. My only real critique with the intro is that the song they used, Mekon's Where Are You, it doesn't really have the energy and punch that an intro to a Zero video really deserves. Also, I can see maybe why a lot of clips in this intro are used. They're good clips, but given the way that these guys' parts are, they're fine to be in the intro. Except for Chris Cole's backside flip down the Wilshire 15. Why wasn't that in his part? Just seems like a pretty heavy trick to just be like, eh, just throw it in the intro, that'll be fine. Skateboarding and Motorhead, two of my favorite things in the world. This song, We Are The Road Crew, is a great fit for a Zero video and an amazing Motorhead song. John Alley skates to it really well. And when it comes to John Alley, I can't really find much on the guy. Apparently the last time Zero released a John Alley board was summer of 2021. And they've had two drops since then. And when doing research, I noticed that Zero nuked the team page on their website. So I don't know if he's on the team or not. The first clip of John's part is a line where he backside 180 fakie 50s a bench, turns around dorkily, and then frontside 360s a four block. A couple clips later, we get two angles of a really well done frontside 270 back lip. Can we just appreciate the dip at the end of this switch backside 180? I actually really love the willy grind down this rail. I can't tell if this clip is a little bit of a joke or if John actually really wanted to willy grind a rail for this part, but this is a big rail for a joke trick. Then there's this bail of a kickflip backside wall ride and one of my very few critiques with Zero's editing style. Z 
Zero's videos have this very shotgun editing style, where the clips rifle off very quickly. I do love this style. It's very fast-paced and in-your-face. It works really well with the punk, rock, and metal used in the videos, and one thing that aids to the chaos is putting slams in the parts. The one thing I don't like is that quite a few times there are bails or slams for tricks that were never made. And yeah, while this does look like it hurt, it's not like this other bail a little later in the part, where when you see that his lip was cut open, it makes sense that we don't see a landed one right after. This looks like he could have mustered through it and landed it. Anyway, after that cock block of a bail, we're treated to a nice looking backside nose blunt slide down a round rail. Right after that, he does a caveman into a front board down, again, way too big of a rail for this to just be a dork clip. It seems really weird to throw dork tricks down at these spots and then not have another clip of a more quote-unquote real trick at the same spot. A stylish crail slide is the trick of choice for a rare John Alley transition clip, which is followed by a perfectly balanced 180 nose grind on a square handrail. Also, does this frontside flip count? How long was he trying it? I have a lot of questions like these, and I know I'll have more as I do more videos. I've considered reaching out to some of these dudes if they have an active Instagram account, but I don't think my curiosity is big enough to DM John Alley on Instagram and ask him about the Willy Grind, the Caveman front board, or this frontside flip. I know that if I were a pro skater, whose last real full video part was almost 13 years ago, and I got a DM from a random kid asking how many tries a random trick took in my video part from almost 17 years ago, I'd look down at my phone, confused, and just respond with, I don't fucking know, dude. But, then we get a pretty pinchy front crook for 2005. Hey, want to make this line a little longer? How about you ollie over a puddle before kick-flipping over a grass gap and then pulling a fat stalefish off the bump? Nolly nose blunt slides down rails will always be a very aesthetically pleasing trick for me. Another editing gripe, but I realize it's very minor. On this kickflip front lip, I would have shown the long lens before the fisheye, because the fisheye angle makes it look a lot floatier. Like, the way this is edited, it kind of feels like, oh, I guess he didn't really float that high over the rail. Whereas if you flip the clips, it's more like, damn, he floated over that rail. After that, John does a ridiculously good kickflip backside lip slide, but not before damn near sacrificing his manhood. A tail slide is a pretty dangerous trick choice for a 16 stair round handrail, but John makes it look easy. This rail over drop at Rincon is massive, and John floats a kickflip and a frontside flip down it. John's ender is a frontside flip into a huge switch hill bomb down a crusty hill with a lot of cracks. Overall, I think John's part is a great way to kick off this video. The song is fast paced, the part features mainly handrails and gaps, and the editing features a lot of slams. Okay, so I'm just gonna get the hot take for this part out of the way. I do not dig the song used for Garrett Hill's part. Another Girl, Another Planet by The Only Ones, which was apparently picked out by Corey Duffel, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I, I did want it to be uh, a little bit different, and I got really lucky with the song choice that we went with for that part. Um, what song was it? I forget. It was Another Girl, Another Planet by The Only Ones, and Corey Duffel had helped me out with picking that song. I gotta Rad. say, Corey Duffel is probably the best music supervisor. For sure. Ever for yeah. sure because like I've 100%. hit him up for like enjoy stuff whatever and he's yeah. always like oh use this song whatever and it always works yeah wow. yeah he's That's... on point he, with he's music. like incredibly dedicated to music yeah. and his mm -hmm. knowledge of music is so expansive the alternative to that was I was gonna use a song by the darkness oh. I don't know if you remember this band but they were like an 80s cock rock band and they sung I believe in a thing called love yep okay I believe in a thing called love that's the Come one. On. Great song. <laughs> Great band. Uh, I was going to use a song called Get Your Hands Off My Woman Mother Effer. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a heavy song. Sure. Sounds like it. And me and Chris, me and Cole were fighting for that song for a little while because it was just so much fun. It was such a ridiculous song. Okay. And Shared part. 
and but this was at like the height of the darkness like right after that that hit song came out mm-hmm. and it was like 10 grand or something like that oh, to get the rights to that song wow and jamie was like hey man i don't i don't know if we can swing that like yeah we could if you're like dead set on it we'll get the rights but um he did hit me up later and he was like hey we got the rights to it they, they came down a little bit on the song he's like do you want to use it and i was kind of freaked out and then Corey came in save the day Oh, Help wow. me out with that song. Yeah. So was and that we song... laid it over and it just like it just worked. It and worked. it was such a good synchronicity and it and it um it represented me so well. I, I felt like oh, yeah. after the video part came out, I was so happy with it and so proud of it. I just think it sounds like a punk rock version of a soft rock 80s hit, which that whole genre is probably some of my least favorite music. Like actually slow this song down, add a bunch of like effects pedals to it, and it's an 80s soft rock crap song. It fits the part okay, but admittedly kind of sounds weird in a Zero video, to me at least. Alright, let's get into the actual skating. This was Garrett's first video part ever, but with the tricks he's laying down, he looks like he's had a few under his belt. Nowadays, Garrett is a judge at Street League, but he has numerous other ventures including triathlons, a coloring book, and even going into the medical field specializing in heart ultrasounds. Another part that starts with a line. Although this line is just a flat ground kickflip before a nollie backside 50-50 down a handrail that he also nollie backside 5-0s. I always find lines that are just flat ground trick before big rail or gap are supposed to be a distraction from us thinking that the trick on the actual spot isn't quote unquote hard enough. But oh well, after those rail tricks we get an absolute floater of a pop shove it. Next up is a pretty random picnic table trick for a zero skater, a backside nose grind nolly varial heel in puffy white shoes. The next clip is a switch varial heel done really well. This varial flip is super sick, and surprising for a skate video from 2005, I feel like the varial flip was like a trick from around the late 80s, early 90s, and then in the late 90s when everything became more about style or how big the spot was, it kind of died down up until maybe around 2015-ish when they became cool again. Sorry to go on an aside here, but skateboarders are dorks, man. Like, think about the fact that some of us care so damn much about how a little wooden toy flips underneath someone's feet. So much so that during certain eras of skateboarding, there were some tricks that were literally uncool to do. Like, it's so weird that someone could do a trick absolutely perfect, and then some dude on slap who lives in his parents' basement with a desk covered in Mountain Dew cans comes along and says, I mean, like, but it was a very old flip, so... Anyway, the next clip in Garrett's part that I really like is the kickflip frontside 50-50 down this hubba. Looked really good. This switch backside heel flip is beautiful as well. Another massive pop shove it happens after the song in this part plays a basic ass Leonard Skinner guitar solo. This massive kickflip backside 50-50 made me realize that Garrett looks like a love child between Chris Cole and John Alley when he's wearing a wrist cuff and a backwards hat. I really like the way that Garrett's tray flips look, and this one down the double set was proper. This Jaws-esque melon grab down the stairs was honestly really sick. I love the filming on this Pop Shove at 5.0, it looks so good. Garrett's Ender is an after black Nolly 50-50 down a massive legendary kinker. Garrett's part's pretty good. I think there were a few kind of more fillerish tricks in certain places in this part, but it did have a lot of bangers. The main thing that would help this part is better song choice. Oh my god! Another song in this video I don't really care for. Bill Mackay by The Coral is a pretty annoying song. I think I just don't like it because it's a song from the early aughts that is trying to sound like the Beatles, like pass, please, like anything else. I can't think of a worse concept for a band, except for maybe like a group of white kids from Nebraska or something joining up to make a mariachi band, which is essentially what Ska is, but with a different country's music. Anyways, I could go on for ages about unacceptable music, and believe me, with some of the skate videos to come, I'll get there in due time, but for now, let's get back into the skateboarding. 
John Rattray actually has a LinkedIn page. And apparently after his last video part, which was in Zero's Cold War, a video I, I will definitely get to at some point, he was the team manager for New Balance for a little less than a year before moving on to Nike SB for about seven years. And now he's climbed up the ladder into being the strategic planning manager at Nike proper for a little over a year now. Good on you, John. John Rattray's first clip with music is him attempting to lip slide over people, but then breaking his board and it almost getting run over by a car. His first real clip is a line, like the previous two parts, a switch backside flip, followed by a dorky power slide into a tray flip, into a big front lip. Next up is a pretty stylish back lip, followed by kind of fighting for balance before ollieing down the stairs. I will give him credit, most people run down the stairs to try to power slide before them at this spot. Another unexpected varial flip makes an appearance here. Welcome back, varial flip. You're accepted for who you are in this house. Honestly, this hippie jump to quick back 180 could have been its own clip. That's gnarly as fuck, dude. We didn't need the Jedi mind trick tray flip beforehand, but this is a rad clip either way. This is a massive ollie out of nowhere, what the fuck? After watching this back a few times, I can confirm that this is a varial backside boneless. At first I thought this was some sort of Russian boneless with a varial, then I thought it was a 360 varial backside boneless, but it's not. The board only spins 180 if you keep an eye on the Osiris sticker. Pretty cool dorky move, I dig it. He follows up that somewhat of a dork clip with a blasted kickflip to fakie. This is a pretty sick pool clip, but the icing on the cake is that the only graffiti in the pool is just the word fuck. Like, that can't have some underground graffiti meaning to it, it's just the word fuck. <laughs> John touches his knee to the board on this tuck knee, a move that if I attempted, I'd probably be out of commission for a few days. Ollieing onto this electrical box had to be absolutely terrifying. John's Ender is a hippie jump to kickflip on the same spot he hippie jumped into back 180. This is kind of a strange choice to me. Like, I think it's weird that a hippie jump to back 180 is like, eh, middle of the part. But then the hippie jump to kickflip is the Ender. I'm not trying to say that a back 180 is just as hard as a kickflip, but I mean either way, to hippie jump a rail this tall, then land set up to jump down a pretty decently sized 4 block takes a lot of skill. Overall, I don't hate John Rattray's part skating-wise. I think he's a pretty unique skater and a weird fit for Zero, and this part is a weird fit for this video. If you got rid of the threshold freeze frame with the blood letters in the intro, I'd swear this part was in a different video. Up next we have Tony Cervantes, a mainstay in Zero videos, but this was his first. Tony's still on Zero, he's still pro, and he just a couple months ago released a pro shoe on Fallen. This is also where the music starts to pick up. Skating to Minor Threat's Good Guys, this is just another song and band that screams Zero. The first part that doesn't start with a line, Tony powers through a kink with a nose grind after a couple of bails. After a couple of pretty gnarly slam clips, we get a line with a nollie flip on flat before a back lip on a hubba. Airwalk board slide is probably the most random trick ever, and honestly I'm not mad at it. Tony finally lands that gigantic ollie we'd seen a couple of slams of previously. This hard flip over the grass gap looked really good. This clip is strange. When I first looked at this clip, I thought it was a front salad to fakie, but frame by frame it looks to be a front blunt to fakie where the heel side wheel was on top of the rail. This tuck knee over the double set is sick, but I'd love to see a long lens angle to see just how tucked it really was. An interesting approach to this legendary Miami hubba, going from the bench and avoiding the giant crack on the way down. A backside stalefish is way more awkward of a trick than Tony makes it look here. I love this nolly hard flip over the chain, it's got a lot of style to it. The second willy grind in this video, just like the varial flip, I wasn't expecting to see two of these so far. Now here's a real front salad grind, a trick that kind of died out that I think people would welcome if it came back. This nolly flip down Hollywood 12 looked like it required a lot of power. This back 180 melon down the same double set as before looked really good. Look, I'm definitely a street grab apologist, 
but of all the tricks to do down Carlsbad, Airwalk does seem like a really random choice. Another trick that has always gotten a lot of hate, the Disco Flip, is thrown down with ease and is Tony's Ender. Overall, I like Tony as a skater. I think the fact that he balances gnarly gaps and rails with a few kind of dorkier tricks makes him a really fun skater to watch. If you're from the current generation of skateboarding, you don't see this very often, if at all, in skateboarding now. But back in the day, it wasn't uncommon to see an ad for an adjacent brand in a skate video. Mystery, which was a relatively new brand that Jamie Thomas started to be a sister company to Zero with a bit of a cleaner vibe, has the next section in the video. It definitely feels like an ad, mainly because it has a way different vibe to it than the rest of the video. But let's talk about the skating first. The first skater in this section is Lindsay Robertson. I've heard two different pronunciations for his last name. Chris Cole always gives it the long O, Robertson, but I can't be sure on that. Anyway, Lindsay stomps a frontside flip, and then a huge backside heel flip with literally only five frames that you can see him before he pops. This is a pretty well executed inward heel flip down the Bricktown set. I love when people just get random with street grabs. Switch Melon, that's a wild choice. This clip is really weird. Since you see the throwdown, you'd assume this is a line. Nah, it's just a roll-up for this massive ollie. Solid frontside heel flip in Australia. Lindsay ends his section with a backside 180 where he almost rolls the windows up on himself, but holds himself up. Next is Adrian Lopez, who was in all the previous Zero videos but made the switch over to Mystery. Nowadays, Adrian is still on Zero and is apparently the sole rider for Circa Shoes. Adrian's first clip is a frontside flip down this 4 flat 2 he broke his board on in the intro. The back foot on this nolly frontside heel is absolutely wild. I love how lazy the shove looks out of this back tail. Look at the pose Adrian throws during this cab, it looks so sick. Adrian's last clip is a gap to backside 5-0 on a kinked rail, a strange choice considering that clips like these were a dime a dozen in 2005. After Adrian is Dan Murphy, who still skates for mystery even now that it isn't a sister brand with Zero anymore. He has an Instagram account for his skateboard clothing brand called Proof in his bio, and when I clicked their website link it seemed to be gone. Weird. Dan's first trick is a perfectly styled nolly front board with two angles. There's something about nolly hard flips that seem to roll perfectly around the back foot. Switch smith grinds are pretty awkward, but Dan makes it look really easy. If you were to play a drinking game with street grabs in this video, you'd probably die. Oh well, add another sip of something for Dan's slightly stinkier indie down this massive drop. Dan's last trick is a front lip down a pretty long rail. Up next is Ryan Bobier, who just like John Rattray has a LinkedIn profile, which states that he quit professionally skating in 2012, became the team manager for Black Box for three years, and then worked at Nike SB climbing up the ladder to become the global brand integration and operations manager. Ryan's first clip is an ollie over a handrail into a bank that requires a quick swerve to get out of. This backside 50-50 frontside 180 out looks so sick. I looked frame by frame, and it's hard just due to the 2005 video quality, but it looks like Ryan balances this kickflip backside 5-0 the entire time without his tail touching. That takes skill. Ryan's last clip is an ollie down a gap that looks like you could easily snap your tail and do the splits. The last skater in the mystery section is Ryan Smith, who isn't a pro skateboarder anymore, but according to Instagram he still skates. I found a slap message board thread that said that he was in a motorcycle accident a while ago which effectively ended his career, but I found it on slap, so take it with a grain of salt. Ryan's first clip is a mirror line, frontside flip up the curb to switch frontside flip down a massive set. How the hell did Ryan ride away from this nolly backside flip? It was primo until it was literally two inches from the ground. Wild. Another rare table clip with a switch nose manual fakie flip out. This frontside flip nose grind down the Miami hubba is a beauty. I love this perfect switch tray that goes in your face. This is a really nice clip. Ryan's ender, and the ender to this section, is the legendary back lip down Patrick Henry. So gnarly to see that very few have stepped to this spot with harder rail moves. 
This section closes with text that says video coming soon, which it did. That's a story for another analysis video. The song used for this section was Moby's In This World. I don't know anything about Moby aside from the fact that he's one of my favorite SSX characters, but beyond that, I'm clueless. The song's okay, definitely weird for a Zero video, but not far off for a mystery video. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Jamie Thomas is up next, and CCR's Fortunate Son is a great song to get you back into that Zero feeling. And Jamie's still in the public eye as the brand owner of Zero, and he's still skating and putting out clips in videos, so not much needs to be said about where he is now. Jamie's first clip is a wall ride nose grab on a bank to window, which is pretty rad. Crail is a very strange grab choice on this backside wall ride. From what I can see, I don't think Jamie's tail touches the ledge on this across and down backside 5-0, so good on you, Chief. This no comply front three over the DIY street Euro gap is a unique one for sure. Hey, another street grab, this time an airwalk from the hip to flat. This is a great looking backside flip over a railing that you could slice your leg open if you're not careful. I love a good chief front feeble, and this out rail is a great place for it. Is this woman sucking on a lollipop while Jamie blasts this melon tweaker? At first glance I thought it was a cigarette, but you can't really do what she does with a cigarette, so my next guess is a lollipop. Another tuck knee in this video, and Jamie's leg makes full board contact. Jamie rides away surprisingly clean for breaking his tail on this backside nose grind. Jamie's ender is a 50-50 down a pretty long rail, shirtless with a rag in his pocket. Jamie's part in this is classic and legendary, just like pretty much any Jamie Thomas part. I don't really have much to say about this, it's just a good part. The next part is Tommy Sandoval, the third person who this was their first real video part. Tommy skates to an amazing track. Shocking Blues send me a postcard. Shocking Blue is a band that I 100% recommend. Tommy's first clip is a boosted kickflip into a pretty gnarly hill bomb. This front board shove was stupid casual. Tommy blasts a fakey ollie down the Wilshire 15 mid-part. I love the way this feeble back 180 looks. There's something about pretzel or rewind moves that butters my croissant, and Tommy does it really well here. This is a pretty cool trick combo here, frontside big spin to frontside half cab. I also really love lines that continue a rotation like this. The way Tommy points his nose down on this feeble to fakey down the Merlin 14 looks so good. I know it's another pretty universally hated trick, but I personally love this Nolly Smith grind. I love backside nose blunts filmed like this, they look really sick. This tray flip looked absolutely perfect for how big of a drop this is. Tommy goes full e-boy for this feeble grind. At first I didn't think this was Tommy, but it has to be with the way the feeble looks. Tommy's ender is a massive steep 21 stair lip slide to fakey. Tommy's part is great. The size of things he skates is pretty insane considering this was his first part, and it only got gnarlier from there, which I'm sure we'll go into at some point, as I plan to cover every Zero video on this channel. One thing I want to get out of the way for James Brockman is that according to slap posters, James called former Black Label bro Shuriken and Shannon the N-word, and apparently said something about banging underage chicks in a Trans World Top 5 article, but the latter if true just sounds like a really shitty joke. Either way, I don't think this dude was cool off the board at all. It definitely feels weird to review clips in good light after knowing things like this about someone, but this is kind of what I signed up for. I mean, skateboarding had a real weird problem with gay people until like 2016, and it still has somewhat of a problem with women and trans people as well. So digging up skeletons like these aren't surprising, but still a bit of a bummer when I want to review and analyze these parts objectively. 
Okay, so James skates to music legend Iggy Pop's song, Some Weird Sin, which comes off the fantastic album, Lust for Life. James' first clip is a backtail revert on a pretty steep bank slash quarter pipe spot. When it's got transition and it's this steep, but it's a street obstacle, it's hard to call if it's a bank or a quarter pipe. James ollies over a kitty trike before pitching the fuck out of this front crook to fakie on a curved ledge. Another airwalk? Sign me up. This time it's down the Rincon 4 block. I feel like this kickflip 5-0 to Backside Smith is one of the few legitimate lines in this part. I mean, as we've covered, most of the lines in this video are just a flat ground trick before or after the spot they're skating, as opposed to two pretty hard tricks on different obstacles. This kickflip front nose on this kinked hubba looked really cool. Nose blunt slide seems like one of the scariest moves to do at a spot like this, and James handles it with ease. Another switch smith grind in this video, and again, the person doing it made it look way too easy. I'm surprised this switch front board down the Wilshire 15 has only one angle. I mean, it's pretty heavy to go down this big of a rail both backwards and switch. There is a lot to go wrong there. Front blunt seems like a pretty wild choice for this hubba, and he points the fuck out of it. James's ender is a nose grind down the Franklin 18, which is pretty insane. Yeah, James's part is good. A lot of rails that launch you straight into the ground, handled really well, and James looks pretty good on a board in my mind. It's just hard to give a part high praise when a dude has probably done some pretty fucked up things. But luckily, last part would go to someone with a much less checkered past and legacy. This man requires no introduction. Everyone knows who this guy is, and from 2000 to present day, he's put out nothing but solid parts. And in my mind, this part is only rivaled by another part you'll see me talk about in due time. Chris skates to Joan Jett's Do You Wanna Touch Me, which, until I watched through the credits of this video for the first time doing this research, I didn't know that it was written by Gary Glitter, who had a lot of, uh let's just say, videos of people doing naughty naughty things when they're under the age that doing naughty naughty things on camera is legal. So another piece of history to throw into the ocean like a car battery, but alright. Chris's first trick is a tray flip lip slide, which immediately lets you know that this part is going to decimate everything you just watched. How about a half cab blunt slide and fakie 50180 down the Beverly High 9 rail? This varial heel flip almost goes awry under Chris's feet, but he wrangles it and rolls away cleanly. Chris annihilates this Australian 9 and a half? He lands all three tricks right over the half ish stair point, so we'll call it that. Both this Nolly Backside 360 and Nolly Tray Flip over this rail at another Australian spot are really heavy, and the angle the Nolly Tray was filmed at makes it look really cool. Chris shoves this late shove so late that he almost clears the gap before releasing his board. I find it kind of interesting that the Tray Flip lip starts the part, but then a kickflip board slide at the same spot is in the middle of the part. It just seems like a weird sequence to me. Chris unleashes his inner Daywan with a four bench manual to kickflip out. More Australia footage comes our way with this line of a frontside 360 to a nollie heel that made me think he was setting up for the ledge to a big backside 360. Chris throws down a pop shove at nose grind and switch 180 50 180 on this classic seven stair hubba. I love this backside 50 to frontside nose blunt slide line. These rails are massive. Right afterward, Chris backside wall rides over this grass gap with no sleeves and no hands touching the wall. This kickflip backside nose grind has no nose touch down this hubba, which is incredibly impressive for such a tech move. I love that Chris's grip tape says fuck king of the road on it. Again, another thing I could DM a pro skater about, but then I'd be the annoying kid asking pro skaters dumb questions, but there's gotta be a story behind this. Nose slide nollie heel and 50-50 kickflip out are two pretty tough moves for 9-stair handrails, but this is Chris Cole we're talking about here. And as a little bit of an aside, and I hate to do this because this part is going to get to the really good part, I remember when I was a teenager, 
My friends and I thought it was like kind of uncool to like Chris Cole because he was in the skate and Tony Hawk games and he was winning street leagues and X games. And so he was like too mainstream of like a skater to like. But nowadays I'm just kind of like, whatever, dude. Like I love Chris Cole. You thought the street grabs were over? How about a tuck knee down the Hollywood 16, which I think is a Terra Chad move. Another awkward handrail move is a switch nose blunt slide, and Chris does a perfect one on this golden rail. Look how calm Chris looks switch front heeling this massive double set. Before tray flip nose blunts became a dime a dozen contest move, people actually had the perception that this trick was insanely difficult, and Chris does a perfect one on this Philly rail. This massive bullet belted switch frontside flip looks amazing. Chris one-ups his previous Australian backside 360 by adding a kickflip to it. The final in-song banger is a backside 270 nose blunt down the Beverly High 9 rail. And after black, we see Chris take the beating of a lifetime. I mean, like probably 60 goes into that. I figured out uh, something that would make me do it quicker now. You know, what's that? So you right. already ran through it. Yeah, I already I I put in the hard work. I already dug the hole. So what was the yes. trick? Just, what was the secret? So it wasn't it wasn't paved all rad at the top, right? Mm. And so right where you would take off for it, it had a slight dip, mm -hmm. and then the tops the top of the wedge was right there. So it dipped down and then go straight with i mean maybe it was a foot of distance so i was trying to pop before it oh gotcha. because i was like dude i'm not oh, most of the time i'll pop before the crack if there's a crack i'd i'd rather just pop before it um Rincon has like a whole big block that's tilted down yeah so when i skate Rincon, i pop before it oh it makes more mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. because it's just a, a straight drop um, so I was doing that at Wallenberg forever. And then finally I just decided I was just going to ride down the whoop and then try flip off the end off the very and, end. Uh, right. And I landed in like eight goes. How many tries were there was the whole thing? I mean, you said 60, 60 but I was thinking it was 68. Wait. So on those tries that you're, that you, it shows that you're trying to land it. You're it's showing you popping earlier before, before. Yeah. Oh, I, got yeah. I didn't even realize I didn't that. Realize wow. that. Damn. Then he took it like a little, like, like kind of like, little launch ramp but it's not really because you're going down but i you know but you're right get... you're right yeah. there's a little it's a little bump action yeah 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 wow. dude just Special. to pop before anything that. that foot is a that foot's a foot you know yeah well, but especially since makes... Wallenberg, i think is like 17 feet or 19 feet or something it's like super duper long mm -hmm. well, yeah. wait a minute man 68 tries dude how does your body even like That's how do that, you even do that that clip was insane because of that you kept falling over and yeah. over and over you're like dude this guy is first of all how old were you oh uh, i was um 20 23 but still that's a battle in itself 68 times down that thing bro yeah. I mean, just look at him riding away. He is visibly relieved after that. This is one of the gnarliest tricks ever done, just due to how many tries it took and the way that Wallenberg absolutely served him numerous times. Well done, Chris Cole. Well fucking done. After last part, we have the credits. Something I want to do for these videos is highlight the things I find funny or interesting in the credits, so let's go. One of Chris Cole's thanks is just the letter G, and also a company called Damn Crazy Snacks, which a Google search revealed nothing. Also, for some reason, Fortunate Son and Send Me a Postcard are credited for being off of Greatest Hits albums. These songs are on actual full-length albums that these bands released, so I find it strange that if they're going to list the album the song is off in the credits, they put the Greatest Hits albums instead of the real albums they were off. After the credits, we get a final montage to the song You Can't Put Your Arms Around a Memory by Johnny Thunders, which is an okay song, I guess. 
The outro opens with the clip of Tony Cervantes in the trunk of a car, which is funny, I guess. A random mooning from Colt Cannon happens in this outro as well. Chris Cole's reaction is the same as mine. Garrett punches someone in the van next to Jeff Grosso. Rest in peace, dude. Chris Cole switch fronts and flips this gap, then breaks his tail and rides away as if everything's okay. Why are straight dudes into inflicting pain on each other like this? I don't get it, and I don't think I ever will. The last clip in this video is a triples wall ride clip gone awry when James Brockman takes a slam, and then it fades to black before revealing the words, zero or die. All in all, I think this is a really good skate video. Perfect in length, nothing feels like it goes on too long. The soundtrack isn't perfect, but very few skate video soundtracks are. I know that a lot of people like to critique Zero videos and the like for just seeming like there's a whole bunch of handrail and stair set clips, which to be clear, there are a shit ton in this video. I think there's just enough transition, bank, table, and ledge tricks to somewhat counterbalance the argument. Plus, I don't really get the fuss about a video being mainly one type of spot. A lot of these rails are pretty different in size and steepness, and the dudes all have different styles when it comes to skating them. But that does it for me on this review slash analysis on New Blood. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you've never seen this video in full, or if it's been a while and you want to watch it again, I've provided a link to the highest quality version I can find on the interwebs, as well as links to any other footage I've used. Next time, I plan on reviving my one-part series reviewing every Transworld video, so take a look at my channel if you want to cringe at that old thing. I hope you have a great day, and I hope to see you next time we dive in.